Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to practice uh, analyzing a circuit in a different way. Uh, that uh, basically we're going to switch uh, what's known and what's unknown and turn the normal circuit analysis question into a design problem. So normally, you know what the values for the, your components are and you're asked to calculate the currents and voltages in the circuit. Uh, in a design problem, uh, you switch what's known and unknown. In other words, you know what the voltages and currents in a circuit you want to be in, in a sense, but you're asked to then find the values for the components that give you that those voltages and currents. But nevertheless, the approach uh, would be exactly the same. Uh, the equations that you're going to write, the algorithm that you're going to follow is exactly the same uh, and only the knowns and unknowns have switched. So let's practice that for this specific question. These are what's known. As you can see, we know what the input resistance is. We know what the current of the transistor is and we know what the voltage uh, source drain voltage of the transistor is. Uh, obviously, we do know the parameters that we, sh we need to use uh, to describe the operation of the transistor and what needs to be calculated are R1, R2, and Rd. So this would be your minus 5 volts. This I'm going to call it obviously Vg. This is your 5 volts. This is our uh, Vs that now obviously is 0. So Vs is equal to 0. This is our Vd, the source and drain. Uh, finally this is minus 10 then we have a current I1 here and this is the only current uh, that is passing through this branch of the circuit because the current going into the gate is zero and then finally there is one current ID both for the source and the drain obviously with that we can uh, proceed to writing equations obviously we don't have to write KCL um, so we just start by writing equations for components. Uh, now we have to use the knowns, the known values when we start writing the equations. Uh, so let's start by saying uh, the equation for, by reciting what the equation for R1 is. So that would be I1 is equal to 5 minus Vg uh, divided by R1. Uh, for R2, I1 would be uh, Vg minus, minus 5 divided by R2. Uh, for the resistor Rd, we have Id equal to Vd plus minus minus 10 basically, or plus 10 divided by Rd. Now I do know that this value needs to be 5 milliamp. So I put that right there. Um, then the equation for the transistor. So I'm going to assume that the device is in uh, saturation and that's actually given that the, the question says VSD is equal to 6 volts or in other words VDS is equal to minus 6 uh, and we we can assume that the device is in saturation. So ID is equal to KP. We're going to assume that the gamma del the delta is equal to zero also. Kp is equal to Vgs minus Vt to the power of two. Now that's Vg minus Vs minus Vt to the power of two and Vg minus Vs is zero. Minus Vt, it's a negative number, so that would be plus 1.75 to the power of two. And again, this is also equal to five milliamps. So now we have Kp as three times Vg plus 1.75 to the power of 2 and that's equal to 5 milliamp. Yeah. 
So uh, you can clearly see that from this equation, I can actually calculate Vg. Now there is one piece of information uh, that I haven't used yet, and that's the input resistance. And looking into this circuit, since uh, the current going into the gate is zero, this is basically an open circuit in terms of uh, DC or low frequency, and therefore the resistance that is seen here is is just R1 and R2 in parallel to each other. Now when you calculate resistance, if you recall the first thing that you have to do is to uh, turn all the internal sources off. So turning 5 volts off turns it into just a short circuit to ground and turning the minus 5 volts uh, off turns it into a short circuit to ground as well. So the input resistance looking in would be just R1 and R2 in parallel to each other. So R in is equal to R1 in parallel with R2 that's R1 R2 over R1 plus R2 and that has to be equal to 80k and finally there's actually one more piece of information that's uh, VSD is equal to 6 so that would be VS minus VD being equal to 6 and the Vs is zero, so from this Vd is known and it's equal to minus six. So with that, now we're ready to solve uh, for everything. So from this one, like I said, we can calculate Vg. Um, this is a sec this is a quadratic equation, so you're going to get two Vg values, but only one is valid because one of them is not going to meet the criteria for the device to be even on. In other words, VGS has to be smaller than VT in the case of uh, PMOS, but one of the VGs that you're going to get here is going to result in a VGS that is not even smaller than minus 1.75, and that's not acceptable. So the acceptable VG turns out to be minus 3.04, which is a smaller than minus 175. So you go with that VG and then uh, once you have that and you also know what VD is, uh, from this you can calculate uh, your RD. So um, minus 6 plus 10, that would be plus 4, so that's 4 divided by RD is equal to 5 milliamp so your RD turn out to be 4 divided by 5 or 0.8 kilo ohm or 800 ohm so that's one of the things that you were trying to calculate and then finally with VG being known put that in this equation so that would be 58.04 uh, divided by R1 and uh, here would be 1.96 divided by R2 and these two are equal to each other so 8.04 divided by R1 is equal to 1.96 divided by R1 divided by 1.96 divided by R2. So you actually do have R1 over R2 being equal to 8.04 divided by 1.96. That's R1. And you take this equation and this equation, and basically you can uh, so from this you know R1 plus R2 over R1 R2 is uh, equal to 1 over 80. That means 1 over R2 plus 1 over R1 is equal to 1 over 80. 
So if you multiply both of, so with this and that, you can simply calculate R1 and R2. So you take R1 as a function of R2, put it here, calculate R1, and the other one is easy to calculate. So from these two equations, now you can calculate R1 and R2. And that concludes your design. Okay, uh, hopefully this has been helpful, and thank you for your attention.